Hello everyone and welcome back to another Edge 130 video tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to cover another extra example of particle equilibrium. This concept is really important because even though it seems simple now, getting those equilibrium equations, so your sum of the forces in x and sum of the forces in y, is one of the most important parts of this course because most of the course, specifically after the midterm, will use those equations for every single example and they are just such a small part of what's to come. So it's good to get those fundamentals down now. All right, with that being said, let's begin the example. Alrighty, so looking at this example, it says the members of a truss are connected to the gossip plate. So if you guys are wondering what a gossip plate is, it's basically this plate here. And you see them a lot in structural engineering, but you guys don't really need to know this for this course. But in case you're wondering, there you go. And it says if the forces are concurrent at point O, so what that means here is that all those forces that we see, which I'll just kind of highlight in red, if you expand them, they all intersect point O, which is what we want when we're dealing with particle equilibrium. We want all the forces to meet at a certain point. So this says determine the magnitudes of F and T, oops, of F and T for equilibrium. And we got to take theta is equal to 90 degrees. So before we begin real quick, let's just look at some uh, basic geometry. So if we got F that comes in, oops, let's say that we have F comes in like this just from the figure, and we know that t goes out like this, at about 0. 0.0. And I'm just going to draw a horizontal axis here, because this will make our lives much easier. What we want to do is we want to find our two angles. So this one we'll call theta 1, and this one we'll call theta 2. So we know that theta 1 is just going to be the inverse tangent of the opposite over the hypotenuse. So we know that for case F, we have three and four. So it's gonna be 10 of three over four. And when we type that into our calculator, we get 36.87 degrees. And even though that's not super important because when we're finding the components of F, we're just gonna use that little triangle, we need it to determine theta two which is going to be the 90 degrees, which we're given in the question, minus the 36.87 degrees. So theta 2, which is kind of the one we're after, is going to be 53.13 degrees. So that's just some uh, little math that we're going to do before we start. However, you could also choose to do this math directly on your free body diagram. It doesn't matter. But speaking of free body diagram, Again, when we're dealing with these type of questions, the free body diagram needs to be the first thing you guys do. It's worth quite a bit of marks, and professors really want you guys to show it. Because again, it seems simple now, it'll get much more complex going on. So this is our point, and for part particle equilibrium, it's always a point, which is nice. So on this point, we have three forces. We have a 9 kilonewtons that goes up like this. So again, I put the arrow to show the direction and I label it. So 9 kilonewtons. I have a force F that kind of comes in at an angle, so it's going to be like this. I'm just going to label it as F because we don't know what F is. And then of course we have to put the geometry with F, so we know that its triangle is 5, 3, and 4. And then finally we have T, which comes out like this. So we're going to have T that comes out, just highlight it, and I'm going to, again, we want to put all the geometry. So I also, like I said in the last video, I like to draw a little axis to kind of know which is Y, which is Z, no, sorry, Y and Z, <laughs> X and Y. So we'll go back to the pencil. So then with this axis in, I can put the geometry T. So we know that this angle here is going to be 53.13 degrees. So, as I said in the last video, this free body diagram looks really good, but it's not complete. The last thing that we have to put in is just our sense of direction. So everybody knows exactly what we're measuring from when it comes to marking these. So I just put this in the corner. I'm going to put this as X. This is Y. And then again, for later, this is going to be for positive rotation. Counterclockwise is positive. So that being done, we can go ahead and begin doing our equilibrium equations. So again, you can start off with e anyone you like. It does not matter. I always start with x. I usually go x, y, and then later on you'll see that there's a third one called moment. So I always go x, y, and then I do the moment. 
but we're going to start with x and what's nice is if we look at the nine kilonewtons it actually has no x component it just goes vertically which is quite nice so if we're looking at the next force we've got force f and we know that its x component's going to be going to be four over five because it goes four units for every five units sorry it goes four units for all the hypotenuse but the one thing that you guys have to keep in mind is if we look at force f and then we look at specifically its horizontal component it goes something like this and if we look at that right there we can tell that that's in the negative x direction so we must put a negative on that f and then we can move on to t so we're going to go plus t and this one's going to be times the cosine of 53.13 degrees and what's nice is t i'm just going to erase uh, what we did for f and if we look at the x component of t we can see it goes to the right something like this so it is a, indeed a positive value which we have plus t now even though this is the equation another thing markers are going to check because it's something that it's easily forgotten i know i forget it a couple times it's we have to state that these equations are equal to zero it's in static equilibrium meaning that the forces all the forces in the x direction must cancel out so the total is zero which makes sense because if there was excess force in that direction it would indicate that the particle is actually moving but in static equilibrium we're not going to deal with moving so we're just going to say that the forces are equal to zero which is perfect it's what we want and then real quick what i'm going to do to simplify this i can move f to the other side so i'm going to go f oops i'm going to go f is equal to so f went to the other side so the t state is positive so f times t times cosine of 53.13 and that's going to be divided by 4 over 5 so i'm just dividing the 4 over 5 to get rid of it onto the f side and transfer it to the other side i'm going to go dot 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 and that's going to be equation one so that's our sum of the forces in the x so we took all of the sum of the forces in x and then with that we we're able to get an equation for f as a function of t which is going to be great because as you guys know from the last example we're going to have to do some substitution later so the second step is looking at the vertical component so we're going to go some of the forces in the y direction so as we see there's actually another force besides f and t in the y direction in this case and that's the nine kilonewtons so what we're going to do is we're going to put nine kilonewtons and if we look at this nine kilonewtons it goes up so therefore it is a positive value but if we look at f we see it goes down so we're going to have minus f and then the components of f so if we look here it goes three over five so we're going to go three oops we're going to go three over five and then we're going to move on to t so looking at t t also goes downward so we're going to go minus t and then the component of t is going to be the sine 53.13 degrees and again, this must equal zero for static equilibrium. So we have to put that equals zero. So with this, we're able to start solving what we want. And like I said, the nicest thing I like to do is put the variables on one side and all the uh, numerical numbers on the other side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go F times three over five. So it's positive now because I moved F to the other side and I'm going to move T to the other side. So T will also become positive. So T times sine of 53.13 and that's going to be equal to 9 and this is equation 2 so dot 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 2 so then what I can do is I can take equation 1 which is right above here and I'm going to substitute that into equation 2 so instead of f times 3 over 5 what we're going to have is t times cosine of 53.13 degrees divided by 4 over 5 that's going to be multiplied by the 3 over 5 so I'm just going to put the divide sign real quick so again all I did was I substitute uh, I'm just going to highlight so you guys can see I took all of this here and I substituted it in for f at this point right here so moving on and then we're going to have plus t times sine of 
and that's going to be equal to 9. So this equation is really nice now because our only unknown in this equation is t, so we can directly solve for it. So the next thing we want to do is we want to factor out the t. So we're going to go t, and then we're going to have big brackets here, times cosine of 53.13 times 3 over 5 divided by the 4 over 5. And again, these are add the division. Oops, I'm going to redo that to make it look a little bit nicer. Ooh, I went too far. <laughs> All right, bear with me, guys. All right, here we go. We're going to divide it. Perfect. And then this is going to be plus the sine of 53.13. I'm going to end that bracket. And all this is equal, equal to 9. So then all I have to do is I have to take everything that's in that big bracket, and I'm going to move that to the other side. So it's going to be 9 divided by everything in that bracket. And what we're going to end up is t is going to be equal to 7.2, 7.2. And remember, t has units, so it's going to have to be 7.2 kilonewtons. So that's perfect. So now that we know t, we can go back up to equation 1 right here, so right here. And we see that we have a nice equation for f if we know t. So we can just substitute this into the equation. So we're going to get f is equal to, and the first one was t, so we're going to go 7.2 and then times cosine cosine of 53.13 and that's all divided by the 4 over 5. So when we put this into our calculator we should get that f is equal to 5.4 kilonewtons. So I'm just going to underline all this. Perfect. So now we have both of our answers. So the final thing we have to do of course is we have to make our nice uh, statement for our answer. So we're going to go t is equal to 7.2 kilonewtons. And we're going to go f is equal to 5.4 kilonewtons. Remember, it's nice to put a box around it so everybody knows what exactly to mark. And that's it. So the one thing that I'd say students would mess up, up, mess up on and their equal, equilibrium equations that'll lead to the wrong answer is going to be the negative signs. So it's important to look at where that uh, vector is going and determine if it's going to be positive or negative. Other than that, the only slight errors that could happen is maybe some uh, numerical calculations. Let's say that you do your algebra a little wrong. But overall, that's not too bad as long as you go slow. Again, don't try and rush it. Rushing is the worst thing that you can do for these examples. So again, this example, not too bad, pretty easy in my opinion. But getting those equations right is crucial because later on when we get into something called uh, internal forces when we're dealing with beams, these uh, finding these equations will maybe be 10% of the actual question. So you're expected to do it quite quickly. So it's just something to kind of keep in mind for later and show how important they are. Because you'll use these for every problem in the second half of the course, I promise you. All right, so with that being said, thank you so much, guys, for listening. And the next examples, we'll go into some... Uh, some actual trickier situations. I know these ones are pretty straightforward. We'll get into the tricks, the tricks that usually uh, th that'll get you, especially on the midterm. All right, guys, so thank you so much, and I'll see you guys in the next video.